Howdy. I wanted to take a moment to address how we do the determinant when it looks at a larger size matrix, just a little bit more of the linear algebra components that we're talking about in these sections, because I know not all of us have studied linear algebra. So here we go. So first of all, I'm going to start out with a matrix. And I'm going to use this notation for the elements in that matrix. A11, A12, A13, the first index is telling me what row I'm in. So we measure rows vertically. And then the columns are the second digit. So we've got 1, 2, and 3. So A21, A22, A23, and I'll use just a 3 by 3 matrix for this example, A32, A33. Now, when we talk about computing determinants, it has to be done on a square matrix. So I just want to show you how a determinant is computed in this case, and then we can see how it's a special case of what happens for the case of the 2 by 2. So if I have an expression like this, and I want to determine whether or not that determinant, that matrix is invertible, whether or not the information it's encoding represents a collection of linearly independent or dependent vectors, which in our case, we were talking about functions. So we were looking at a run scan, and so we had a function and its first and second derivatives, another function and its first and second derivatives, and a third function and its first and second derivatives then this is how that determinant would get computed. I like to expand along the top row, but frequently you might choose to use a different one. So what you do is you select an element along one row or column. And if I select this element here, then what I'm going to do is exclude the other items in that row and column. And I'm gonna multiply by the subdeterminant of what's remaining. So I'm gonna take A11 and I'm gonna multiply it by the determinant, so I'm going to use that vertical um, notice here. I need determinant of over here. A22, A23, A32, A33. And we can remember in a moment how we do that computation. Next, I'm going to take an L, the next element. And like I said, I pick a row or column to expand across. I just tend to always use the first row. Next, I'm going to pick that next element. Now, I'm going to alternate every other. If it turns out that the sum of the two coordinates is even, so the 1 plus 1 is even, then I'm going to use a positive coefficient, negative 1 to the 1 plus 1. And then whenever I have an element in the row that's got an, a sum of those two, you know, row plus column equals a negative or equals an odd number, then I'm going to multiply by negative 1 because it would represent multiplying by negative 1 to an odd power. So the next term will be subtracted in 1, 2, because 1 plus 2 is 3, which is odd. Um, and then I'm going to multiply that by, now I exclude the row and column that A12 is in, and I consider what's happening in the remaining matrix. So since I've ignored this row and column, I have the A21 and the A31, and then I have the A23 and the A33. Three, three. So I lost the middle column there. That's a little hard to read. Let me make that bigger. See, is that better? Yeah, not enough. Let's go purple. There we go. A, two, one, A, two, three, A, three, one, A, three, three. Perfect. And I was multiplying by A, 1, 2, subtracted. And then the last one I'll do for the color that may or may not be bold enough is I'm going to take the third element, which is A, 1, 3. And again, I look at the first row, third column, 1 plus 3 is an even number, so it would be negative 1 to an even power, allows me to add. So a 1, 3 times, peek in a little bit here, 
the determinant of a submatrix. So I rule out that row and that column. A21, A22, A31, A32 is the matrix I want. And what we have to remember is each of these subdeterminants, I have a subdeterminant just like A, B, C, D. This is always A times D moving down this diagonal minus B times C. So I use that over and over again. So that's what this computation would look like. So I'm going to give you three functions, and we're going to see what it looks like in the context of those three functions. And I'm going to pick things where the derivatives are pretty easy to compute. All right. So let's take the example of the following three functions. We're going to have f1 of x is going to be e to the 4x. f2 of x is going to be e to the 8x. And f3 of x is going to be 1. Okay. So three different functions. And I'm going to claim that these functions are linearly independent. In order to establish that, I would need to take the determinant of the matrix. So I need to take that run scan, which remember what I do to build that run scan is I put in the functions, f1, f2, f3. Then I put in their derivatives. And since it's three functions, then they're second derivatives. And I would have to check whether or not that's non-zero to see if these three functions ended up being linearly independent. So let's go ahead and do it in our example. So we have e to the 4x. And the derivative of e to the 4x is 4 e to the 4x, while the derivative of that would be 16 e to the 4x. Next, we had e to the 8x. Its derivative would be 8 e to the 8x, and its second derivative would be 64 e to the 8x. Finally, we have 1. Its first and second derivatives are 0. So let's go ahead and compute the Ronskian in this case using this structure I showed up here. So we're supposed to take, if we expand along the first row, and I did mention you could expand around along a different one. You'll see in a second why that's the case and how this probably would have been the column I'd expand over to get it to be a little easier. But I can take that first function, which is in the first row, first column, and I multiply it by the determinant of this matrix. 8e e to the 8x, 0, 64e e to the 8x, 0. Next, I'm going to subtract what comes from this one, e to the 8x. That's the middle column, so it's an odd um, column plus row sum. What I'm left with is this, 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 4e e to the 4x, 0. 16 e to the 4x, 0. It might not take too long to see, but what's about to happen is both of those are going to give me all zeros over here. All right, lastly, I'm going to look at that third row where I have a 1. I'm adding because the row plus column sum is an even number. Um, and I'm going to look at the determinant of this matrix. 4e to the 4x, 8e to the 8x, 16e to the 4x, 64e to the 8x. So what do we get out of here? Let's see what the Ron scan is. How did this 3 by 3 turn out? Well, this is e to the 4x times, multiply across, 0 minus 0. Oh, that whole thing's 0. Minus e to the 8x times, multiply across, down like this, diagonally, 4 times 0, minus 16 e to the 4x times 0. 0. Oh, that's 0. 
but the last term we're actually going to get something. Um, we get 1, so we don't even need that. Let's multiply here. 4e to the 4x times 64e to the 8x minus 16e to the 4x times 8e to the 8x. So notice everything in sight is a multiple of e to the 12x. So what we just have to compare is 4 times 64 minus 16 times 8. That might take you a minute to notice that we're okay here. Um, 64 is 4 cubed. So this is really 4 to the 4th power. And this is just 4 squared times 4. So this is really 4 cubed times, um, 8 is 2 times 4, so this is really 4 cubed times 2. So we actually end up with um, uh, 2 copies of 4 to the 4 left over. Or, I'm sorry, 2 copies of 4 cubed left over, I should say. Um, so this won't be 0. Let me give you the exact arithmetic, which my head won't let me do right now. Um, sorry about that. That's what we're left with. So we get 128e to the 12x. Because this is not uniquely the zero function, I can determine that these three functions are linearly independent. So since the Ronskian is non-zero, these three functions are linearly independent. And that means that if they happened to all these solutions to a particular homogeneous linear differential equation of third order in this example, then I would have found one of those fundamental sets. I would have enough information to generate a general solution. Linear combinations and constant multiples of this function plus this function plus this function always give me new functions that are all solutions. And none of them give me the same function. All right. That's the end of my little story there. Toodaloo.